set up here. Um, today we're going to be talking about healing. We're going to start with the spiritual and emotional side, and then we're going to, if we have time, we're going to go to the financial side. And then probably over, unless God changes it, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to do um, mind and body. So we're going to just call this series Healing Spirit, Mind, and Body. Um, I've got a ton of Bible verses this morning. And what I really wanted to do was I want us to just read them one at a time and break them down. I didn't actually write any note notes like I have sometimes um, because the spiritual side of us um, has to come from the Word of God. It, our healing has to start there. It has to start within us, and it has to start with our relationship with Christ. If we don't have, if we don't ever make that connection to Christ, we're never going to get spiritually healed. That's right. I mean, there's just there's no ifs ands or buts about it. It's not going to make any difference um, in how much knowledge you have of the Bible, how much word you have in you, how many preaching sermons you've listened to, how many books you've read. If you don't have that personal relationship, you cannot begin to get that spiritual healing. That's right. And I feel like. In my, in my spirit, I feel like the reason God wanted us to start with the spiritual healing is the mind and the body doesn't matter it's if you don't right. have the spiritual exactly. right. That's so right. if you don't make that first connection, then the other two is not going to matter. That's right. You know, we, we all hate to see people in pain. That's, uh-huh. that's, it's hard on us to watch our loved ones hurt, to watch people we care about be in pain. And, and we do need to continue to pray for them. Mm-hmm. But just think about this. If we pray for the souls of those that we come in contact with that are lost as much as we pray for those who need healing mm-hmm. in their physical bodies, whoo, mm-hmm. man, our churches would be filled up every Sunday, yeah. every service. We'd be putting chairs out in the, in the pews, I mean, at the ends of the pews. Because, but we get so wrapped up in what we physically see Mm-hmm. that we don't see what God sees a lot of times. Mm, right. And so I think that's one reason he wanted us to start with the spiritual side is he wants us to understand that that connection with him is the most important connection mm-hmm. we can have. And that if we don't get that connection right, then nothing else is going to matter. Right. You know, this morning Stacy was talking about her pipes at the apartment. And how one of the pipes didn't fit together just right, and so the connection wasn't perfect, and oh. the water was spewing everywhere. Mm-hmm. What's well, kind of like mm-hmm. with God? If we yeah, hook good. up mm-hmm. and we make that connection, but we don't get it just right, we, we don't Boy. get it big enough or mm-hmm. small enough or tight enough, then everything spews out. Yes. You know, the words will spew out of our mouth. The smiles will spew no. off of our faces. <laughs> Good one, sister. You know, we'll Ooh, have damn. all of this, <laughs> you know, stuff just coming out of us. That no. means absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And people feel it. They That's know right. it. They know that it's not real. Mm-hmm. But when we get that connection right, and it fits, and we keep it strong, and we keep it strong through the Word, and staying in mm-hmm. church, and mm-hmm. reading books, or what, whatever it is that works for us, it's going to be different for everybody. Mm-hmm. But once we make that connection, and we get it strong, people will notice. They yeah. will see a difference, mm-hmm. just yeah. like the officer yesterday saw a difference in both of you ladies. Mm-hmm. And he said, I know there's something different. I sense there's something different about you. You look good. Mm-hmm. This is our baby well. Yeah, and it is. It really is our J.B. Weld, absolutely. But, you know, we we forget sometimes because we get so caught up in life and we get so caught up in all the other things that's going on around us and we forget that we need to pray for the spirits of those around us, for the spiritual relationships. Tatum, please take that back up front. Thank you, sweetie. Um, and we just forget to make that connection. So um, I'm going to give, uh, Tammy's not going to read this morning, so um, if y'all get your Bibles ready, um, I'm going to start with Psalms, Miss Wendy, Psalms 103, 2, 3, and 5, 
and then 147, 3. And if you want to just read 2, 3, 5, that's fine on the Psalms. All right, Stacy, Proverbs 12, 18, 16, 24, and 18, 21. And I'll give y'all all a copy of these um, when we get through to. And then uh, Miss Val, Isaiah 53, 5, and 61, 1. And then TJ, John 3, 16, and 17. 4, 7, 3, 15, and 11, 25, and 26. And then I've got some other ones that if we have time, we'll, we'll try to look those up. And like I said, these are all like spiritual and emotional uh, type things that um, we're going to read about. Um, so, Miss Wendy, if you want to start, um, we'll start with... The Psalms 103. Psalms 103 says, Despite all your many offenses, he forgives and releases you more than any doctor. He heals your diseases. He reaches deep into the pits to deliver you from death. He crowns you with unfailing love and compassion like a king. When your soul is <clears throat> varnished and withering, he fills you with good and beautiful things, satisfying you as long as you live. He makes you strong like an eagle, restoring your youth. Now that verse can be used for physical healing. It can be used for probably all types of healing. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I felt like God was really pulling out of that is it starts with the relationship. Amen. It's all about the relationship. He will give all these things to you. But y'all remember a few weeks ago we talked about that if. That's right. If that relationship is in place, if that connection is there, mm -hmm. if we're doing our part, God's going to do his part. Amen. He's never going to leave us regardless. Amen. There's nothing we can do. There's no That's sin that. we can do that will push him that far away from us um, that we can't come back. Right, right. But, but if we don't have that relationship with him, he has no obligation to us. To give us that spiritual healing. Amen. To help us to keep a clear mind. To help us have those clear thoughts. Right. To help us make the right decisions. Because if we don't have a connection with him, he can't communicate with us, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. If we're just always communicating with him, then there's no communication <clears throat> back. It there's doesn't no do you any good. There's yeah. no relationship. That'd be like marriage. If you was, you was the only one talking, your husband never said a word, just sat there and listened all the time, never said nothing. Right. I mean, it'd be a one-sided thing. That'd be a yeah. boring relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It would be awful. I, I can't uh -huh. even imagine that. So I really think that God, you know, he's really pulling out of this, trying to teach us in this, that I can heal all things. That's right. I can do all things. I don't need your help. I don't need you for anything. Right. But, but the difference you. in, he wants that's us. Right. That's right. And that's Thank what God. he wants us to understand is, I want you to choose me. Mm -hmm. I want you to choose health over weakness. I want you to choose success over failure. Doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, and it doesn't mean it's going to always go like you want it to. Yeah. But it does mean that, no ma'am, it does mean that it's got to be constant, okay? And when I say constant, I mean constant. It has to be a constant relationship that we have with Christ to keep that connection from breaking. Because, one more time and you're getting a spanking. Because without that connection, we're going to have the spews, we're going to have the leaks, we're going to have the things that's going to happen. So, um, all right, Miss Wendy, 147.3. He binds their wounds and heals the sorrows of their hearts. All right. So the sorrows of our hearts um, was the one thing that, that really stuck out in, in, in that with me. Where do you hurt first? Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Whether it's physical. One more time, you're going to get a spanking. Whether, um, that's a different child there, by the way. Um, <laughs> I know. Lord help me. Here I am in the middle of it and having to give a spanking. 
But without that, <laughs> without that child. scripture. <laughs> all right, child, quit now. I'm I think sorry, what he's Lord. trying to tell us in that is I've got <laughs> to keep my connection right with him <laughs> in order for him to do <laughs> that healing of the heart. Mm-hmm. And it starts with the heart. The mind is connected, and, and people, Everything's connected people want to the think heart. that the heart, that the, the mind is the main thing, mm-hmm. you know, no. and man has learned to keep the heart alive mm-hmm. in many ways, not mm-hmm. just when you're on your deathbed or whatever, right. but the, man has learned that there's other things that can keep the heart pumping. Mm-hmm. But when you think about it, when the heart dies, all the blood yeah. fades away. Well, yeah. I was just fixing to say, like, when somebody's on life support, and they are brain dead, their heart still beats right. on that life support. Yeah. And they're, yeah. Regardless yeah. of what their mind's doing That's or any right. other part of their body, their heart still But beats. we as humans, we want to think it starts here. We want to yeah. think it starts here and it goes down, but it doesn't. Yeah. It starts right here. Yeah. And that's the same thing with our relationship with Christ. It starts in your heart. That's right. If you don't get that connection with the heart right, if you don't connect that up, you, you can't possibly... Fix the spiritual part and of your life. Right yeah. components to yeah. hook up right. right. That's right, and, and it needs to be the Bible, yes, the real Bible, yes. not something that somebody else has put together as a guide. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm not, I'm not calling out anybody particular or anything or any religions or whatever, because whatever tools you can use is great. Mm-hmm. But if they don't line up with the Word of God, if they don't line up with the Bible, yeah. then don't listen to right. it. Right. Don't follow it. Don't right. don't put it in your heart. Because all Satan needs is that one little one rip, that yep. one little crack, that yep. one little piece of tape to come loose, right. and the whole thing goes under. Right. And how quick can that happen? Yeah. Quick. Very, very, quick. very quick. So it all starts with the heart. It all has to start with that connection. And I think that's what he's wanting us to understand in this verse is that we've got to get the heart right. Mm-hmm. We cannot possibly begin to fix the spirit, to fix our emotions mm-hmm. without that heart connection being right. Okay. Um, and, you know, people who don't, who may not believe in God, who, who have had false teachings or who just, I don't, I don't know how you can look at this world and not believe no, that God no, created amen. it. I, I, I mean, I right. don't. But, I know that there are some who can, and, and a lot of times if you look deep into the heart, you'll find the issue. That's right. You'll find that there's been some type of major hurt or pain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's been something traumatic that's gone on that's turned that coldness you yeah. know, to the heart. Yeah. Maybe it's the way they were raised. Right. And I'm not trying to, to down those people because, you know, um, when my girls were in school, they had an atheist friend who... You know, I went to their house, and and, uh, we actually picked her up some and actually brought her to church because even though in her heart she was atheist, she didn't believe that there was a God, there was still something Mm -hmm. she just wasn't sure about. You know, there was still some type of a connection there that she just couldn't quite cut loose. And I think that if we really examine the heart of the people that we're witnessing to, the people that we're talking to, the people that we're hurting, if we quit looking with our eyes, mm-hmm. with our human eyes, and we start seeing through God's eyes, right. we're going to see it and feel it in our heart. Yeah. We're going to know that we're doing what God's asked mm-hmm. us to do. And that's hard to do, ladies. It's yes. hard to make that connection sometimes. Because I don't care how hard you try, first impressions do matter. That's right. We're human. Yeah. What our eyes see first is what sticks in our mind. Mm-hmm. That's the image we have. That's the image we create of that person that immediately puts our defenses up or lets our defenses down. And try as hard as we do, that happens. But that's why we have to pray as a unit to your stop is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. That's why we have to stop um, trying to see with human eyes and asking God to let us see through Jesus' eyes. Let Amen. us see through. Let me see what you see. What's that song, Tammy, that has that in there? Uh, let my eyes I see what you see. Let my hands. Oh, yeah. I can't think. Yeah, let my hands. Um, I want to. Uh, I want. 
I can't remember the song. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember it. But it's it's every time I hear that, every time it comes on, and it's you know, Lord, let let my hands do what you want me to do, and my feet do what you want me to do, and let my eyes see what you see. It's it's the one that I think it talks about. Give me your eyes to see. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm going to look it up. But I, I love that song because it's so real and it starts with the eyes. It starts with that. Give me your heart yeah. for the uh, uh, broken hearted. Yeah. Give me your. I can see. see. We can all yeah, see it. Every, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every, 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 but everything whoever, you know, when that was wrote, I do believe that do. that person was truly being led by God when that was written and when they, you know, when they put that in there. Um, Stacy, you've got Proverbs. I don't know if everybody will be able to hear you from way up there if you want to come back down here um, and read Proverbs 12, 18. Y'all can come on in, Jackie. Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. And see, it's, you know, God, I think when... I think when God gave this this uh, person this song, I think whoever wrote it, I'm not sure who wrote it, but I think that when God gave them this this song, uh, I think that He was trying to say to us, "I know you. I created you. I know you see first with your eyes, but I'm telling you, I want you to ask to see with my eyes. I want you to judge. Right. I want you to see like I see, and you can't." Hey, baby, mm-hmm. you can't do that unless you ask God for that because we don't have godly eyes. So we have to get that connection. You're fine, Jackie. Come on by. Come on in. Okay. Um, all right, Miss Stacy. Proverbs twelve eighteen. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. All right. Now, what's this starting to talk about now? The tongue. What, the tongue. Mm-hmm. And what do we know? How much damage can the tongue do? Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, oh, it's our spiritual health is going to start with control of our tongue. Yeah, the Lord of mercy knows it can tear how. down or it can build up. I'm guilty Absolutely. of that. I'm sorry. And I, I think changed. all three of these, I'm if so I remember right, all three of these proverbs are going to deal with the tongue. Mm-hmm. And I think what God is saying to us in, this, in these proverbs is... This is your tool. Right. That's Use why God wisely. had me look them up when you gave them to me. Yeah. <laughs> Use them wisely. You know, we we've given we've been given all these tools to use. But we still get to decide how we're going to use them. That's right. We decide how we're going to use our heart, how we're going to use our mind, how we're going to use our tongue, how we're going to use our hands. It's all up to us. It's our decision. So we have to make the decision to use that tongue to build up and not tear down. Actually, Mar says, but the speech of the wise is a healing bomb. Wow. Wow. Because it says thoughtless words cut deeply like a thrusting sword, but the speech of the wise is a healing bomb. Wendy, that's awesome. Think about that. When you get a scratch, Mm -hmm. you put Put a bomb on there, right? You put ointment on it to heal it and make it feel better. Well, think about that. We can use our tongue to to slather ointment to to heal these people Mm -hmm. and to heal ourselves. (laughs) Because you know how you know when you're on an airplane and they say you know if it drops Drop. down put yours on first yeah. because you can't help somebody if you haven't helped yeah, yourself that's first. The truth, yeah. Well, it's the same thing with Christ. If your relationship with Christ is not right, how can you possibly well, help good. somebody yeah. else's that's relationship go? You could, but you, you might can be preach the wrong to them. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You can mm-hmm. preach to them. You it's can the give them the witness. word. You can take them to mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever. But they're going to see who you. you. You're the one there. They're yep. going to see your actions. They're going to see your attitude. Yep. They're going to see the things that come out of your mouth yeah. and hear the things that come out of your yeah. mouth. They're going to Thank notice the things that you do a whole lot more than they do the preaching, a whole lot more than they do the word. Those yeah. things are going to stick in their mind. Yeah. So if we get our relationship right, if we heal ourselves with this bomb, That's right. if we let Christ cover our body and heal our wounds first, then we'll be able to heal others. We'll be able yeah. to go out and That's reach others and up. see them and heal right. them in such an amazing way that we can't do otherwise. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to start this healing with us Amen. right here. Amen. And Miss Melanie, who's not here today. Amen. All right, Stacy, 1624. 
Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Mm. Have you ever have you ever tasted a honeycomb? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, I love them. The cereal. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm talking the real <laughs> the honey real McCoy. Oh, it is so good. Um, just my uncle Bobby. I, I used to love to watch him when he would uh, clean out the honey and stuff. But he would always break off a piece of that honeycomb and he would chew it. And I remember when I was younger, um, Uncle Bobby is my mama's brother and. So he would break me sweet, off a piece. Most of the sweetness is in yes. the home. It is, and it's okay. kind of um. I've never had. I've never it's seen kind of wax. one before. It's no, like waxy, mm-hmm. and it it can sometimes mm-hmm. carry different flavors. Like it might be somewhat bitter, oh. uh, or it might have a really, really sweetness because it's where all these little octagon it's shapes. Yeah, so it's like, it looks yeah. like it's where all the honey, you know, was in uh-huh. there, and so it holds all that, and it's mm-hmm. like that sponge, but it, yet oh. it's got that waxiness like a chewing gum or... You remember back in the day you used to have them little things you pop the top on, you bit the top uh-huh. on, uh-huh. Yes. wax? Yeah. Okay, it's like uh-huh. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, those I little soda bottle things. Like when, yeah. you said, when you said it soaks up like a sponge, yeah. you reminded me of something the preacher said one time, and that's the way your brain is. You know, it soaks stuff up mm-hmm. like a sponge, and the more good stuff you yep. put in it, the more good stuff oh, yeah. comes out. Yeah. So if you put good, good stuff in... Mm-hmm. I've, I've found it. recently that if the more good stuff I put in, the less bad words that come out of my mouth. Right, body. right, because it's you're you're pushing mm-hmm. pushing it out. It's mm-hmm. taking the place of it, and you know we we think about the sweetness of this honeycomb, and we're sitting here, and my mouth's just watering thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Melinda. But, I appreciate yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> but has somebody else got another translation of that? Because I had read a different one too. On twenty four, sixteen twenty four. Mine said, no, mine says, basically, saying, mine says pleasant, wor- pleasant words are like a honeycomb. They drip sweet food for life and bring health to the body. All right, that's what I was, that's, mm-hmm. mine said, said something similar. Drips. Mm-hmm. Okay, it drips. Mm-hmm. If something's dripping, where do you have to be to mm-hmm. feel the drip? Mm-hmm. Underneath, underneath it. Yeah. You got to yeah. be underneath it. Like that's a waterfall. Right. <laughs> so where have we got to be? If we're going to catch the drips of this sweetness from God. We've got to be under his feet. Under his word. Yeah. We've got to be under at his, his feet. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be under him. we got to be. We can't yeah. be up here with him. Right. right. Because then the drip's going to fall and we're going to miss it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can't be to the left or to the right because the drip's going to fall and we're uh-huh. going to miss it. we got to be at his feet. Mm-hmm. And in order to get that healing, mm-hmm. that's where we've got to be. We've got to be at his feet. At his feet. I think, in a sense, I, I look at it as those drips are the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. when he's hanging on that cross, mm-hmm. and those drips are falling down, and they're cleansing our body, yeah. and they're cleansing our souls, and they're they're healing us of infirmities, both physical, mental, spiritual. Mm-hmm. But if we're not there at the feet, we don't get the blood. I have another version. Read your stuff. It says instead of pleasant, it says gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness is soul and health to the body. This one and whose who's who's words are these? Things. These are God's, God's words. Word this is his gracious mind. words <laughs> that he's putting in our soul. But he's also wanting us to understand that we've got to put those words back out. Yeah. We can't yeah. just take care of ourselves. We can't uh, just let those drips fall mm-hmm. on us and heal us and then not do anything with not them. Sure, yeah. like He's wanting us to take it out and take mm-hmm. it into the hedges and the highways mm-hmm. and the byways and, and to reach the people in our communities, to reach the people at Walmart, to reach the people that just moved in next door. At work. Whatever the situation mm-hmm. at work. <laughs> to be that light in that dark spot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to... To stand out, to be different, and we ha- we can't do that. We have to spend time with him if we don't have that relationship. Yeah, here's it time it all him. comes back to that relationship. Says, Fine words are like honey; they cheer you up and make you feel strong. Mm-hmm. And they do, you they know, do. somebody yeah. can lift you up in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But I really wanted to bring out the fact that it's about the healing. It's yes. about the spiritual yes. healing. It's about that connection yes. with God mm-hmm. to get that spirit right Weakness so that you get that. Mm-hmm. And help to the bones. Yeah. All the way to the yeah. bone. Yeah. You know, he does, God doesn't mm-hmm. stop halfway. Oh, no. But he goes all the way to the bone. Praise God. All right, Stacy, 1821. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 1821. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Yeah. All right, now, you know, we all know our days are numbered, so don't think that I'm trying to, to just disprove that, okay? 
but the power is in our tongue, mm-hmm. death and life. Yes. Think yeah. about that for a second. We can speak death, which is darkness, mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. our spirit, into our spirit life, mm-hmm. or we can speak life into it. And we yes. if, we're watching, if we're mm-hmm. watching dirty movies, mm-hmm. yeah. if we're going and watching R-rated stuff that's full of language, if we're listening to music mm-hmm. on the radio that's nothing but doom and gloom and blah, 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 blah. We're going to the bars and we're hanging out. But although we're not drinking, but we're out there hanging out, what are we getting fed? What are we feeding our spirit? All darkness. the darkness. Yes. Yep. Your spirit's going to feel heavy. It's going to feel weighted. It's yes. going to feel that's that so darkness true. coming And that is true. So true. But if you yeah. are coming to a <laughs> spirit-filled <laughs> church, Literally. especially one like <laughs> ours, and I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to say our church is better than anybody else, although I think our church is pretty good. But (laughs) um, when you come to a spirit-filled church, it starts with Adam and his praise team. The worship, the the connection that Adam has with God starts right there, right then. And And it feeds down. And And then, you know, it comes down to the pastor delivering the message from the Word of God and letting us see him be a real man yes. and understanding that he mm-hmm. has struggles just like yes. we have. Yeah. And then it comes to us when we're sitting in those pews mm-hmm. to make the decision to act or not act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know that sometimes the decision for us to not move and go to the altar might be a decision that somebody else is making because we don't move. Because yeah. a lot of times I notice until that first person gets up, uh-huh. nobody else gets yeah. up. Because yeah. it's really hard if you're if you're not saved, because we've all been there. Mm-hmm. If you're not a Christian already, or if you're struggling, if you are a Christian and you're really struggling with something in your life, think about how hard it is to be the first one to move. Because everybody's eyes are on you. Are on yeah. you. you know there's not anybody else moving. So yeah. you know when you feel like, oh, everybody's going to look at me. Love you me. know, we have to make, yeah. us ladies are going to have to make that conscious decision to shut that out. Yeah. To be that person to move. Number mm-hmm. one, it might open up yeah. an aisle. And, you know, sometimes you don't go to the altar just to pray about stuff because you mm-hmm. need something or you need something for somebody. Go and praise Him. Praise right. Him. Sometimes I go up there and I'm doing. just like, thank you, God. I mean, for praise heaven. opens up the heavens. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, you I, know? and I'm sure that there's some people out there that think, Oh, well, Lord, there goes that T.J. Sarah girl. I know what she got going on today. What's going on in her life now? No, a lot of times I'm up there praising the Lord for all that he has done for me. Yes, me too. And we need to do more of that. We need to be willing. That's right. We need to not even worry about that. You know, and there's been times, especially with my knee, that that I used the excuse that I didn't go up there because it was too hard for me to get up or get down or whatever. And that was just a cop out. I knew I needed to go. Um, I knew that I needed to move Sunday and I didn't and I've had to ask God to forgive me for that because I pray that my not moving was not the cause of somebody else not being saved on Sunday. But we're going to make mistakes and we're going to do things. Uh We just have to apologize and ask God to forgive us and roll on and that's what I've done. But I know that I needed to have moved Sunday and I didn't. I've done um, that before, too. And he's dealt with you on that, so yeah. I, I, yeah. Don't think that, yeah. I don't think that that would be, but he's letting you know that that's a possibility, that that could happen. Oh, yeah. He's just telling you from now on when he's talking to you, telling you to go. Yeah, go. don't, uh, don't yeah. Yeah. beat yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. What's the yeah. reason? I mean, what's that going to do for you? And you, yeah. Know, and you, know, and yeah. you know, a lot of times so. when, I, when I say amen or that was a good word, mm-hmm. I feel led to do that. Yeah. It's not that I'm trying to yeah, egg no Tim on or throw on a show. I really sincerely feel that in my spirit that God is, he's touching me at that moment. When I'm in there and I'm praising and worshiping and Mm -hmm. preaching's going on, it's like the Holy Spirit is just all around me. He is just falling on me. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's just me and him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, I'm in his presence. Well, we just need to remember (sighs) that, you know, just like going to the dark places, we can go to the light places, like I was saying, to church. You can watch Christian or it doesn't even have to be a Christian TV show. But watch something that's not full of the language uh-huh. that's going to 
Yeah. I don't I don't care yeah. how strong you are, if you put enough of that language in you, you gum wrong. it's gonna it's come, gonna out. come <laughs> out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's and true. it's probably yeah. gonna be when you least want yeah. it to come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah a lot, lot of these stand movies, in charge. If they wouldn't put the <laughs> I've done that before the language and the other scenes in it. Mm. It, probably it, would, wouldn't it would it would be it just be. as good mm-hmm. yeah. without it. Yeah. 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 It but but uh, the world has accepted yeah. that. They've accepted that yeah. language. And that's what too. makes most people move yeah. to that show is yeah. the cussing and the things yeah. that they're doing in that movie. It's right. Just, it's just like Medea. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody watches Medea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they make that money is. off Medea. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Oh, Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. They make money off those movies. But there's a lot of bad language in it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she. And, there's and, a, and then also there's that underlying. You know, loving the Lord, yeah, they're exactly. going to church and stuff like that. Yeah. So you know, it's it's kind of bad, a little bit of both. Well, yesterday I, I seen a thing on, I think I seen on Facebook, or it might have been on TV or something last night, but it said that um, a guy wearing a Jesus shirt was caught on camera shooting out a police window, breaking out a police window. And he had a, sh- a Jesus follower or something like that shirt on. And I thought, you know what? Mm. How mm. often do we wear mm. something? I, I've turned this to the reverse. How often do we wear something and not even realize the message we're giving yeah, out? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's good. Because yeah. I have a lot of blessed girl shirts that I wear to work. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I get angry, curse words come out of my mouth. And I don't mm-hmm. mean to. And I'm really working on it. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's yeah. like... That's true. We God do. Just we 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 we'll have on our that. Jesus shirt, but we're not letting Jesus come out yep. of our mouth. Yep. And so, you know, we we have to not only go to the light places; we have to be the light. Exactly right. We have yeah. to carry that light with we us. Have to be the light we in have the to, darkness. That's right. We're going to have to, and, and that's hard. But if we get the spirit right, yeah. it's going to be a whole lot easier. Yeah. If we make that spiritual connection, then it gets easier and easier and yeah, easier. Put more of this in you than more of the yeah. darkness. Watch the books we read. You know, yeah. watch watch the TV, watch the music. Mm-hmm. Even the places we go can have an effect. That's I true. don't know about any of y'all, but I hate going to Walmart. Me too. I'd rather take a spanking than have to go to Walmart. Me too. It just drives me insane, and it will. De- just make me feel so heavy and so weighted. Mm-hmm. Just going in there before I ever even get there. I just I'm just like, Ugh. Like you know, I'm already like this before I even get in there. If I go to Walmart, I want to get in there, and get I what I I'm going for, and, 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 and go I'm out. I'm not a shopper. I don't shop around. I don't like but you know, there shop. are other people who find Walmart quite healing. Yeah, they, they stand there for hours. They socialize. Yeah, I stand there for three hours. Yeah. Time. You know, they oh, go. Oh, I did too and, back in the day when yeah. I was on that stuff. I mean, I got to look at everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm not on that stuff, so let's just get what we That's need to right. get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. I said that to say this. Our darkness and our light depends on us, not on our environment. That's Amen. right. Okay? Amen. We can be a light in a dark spot. Sure. So I'm yes. not saying we don't need to hang out with people who are struggling or people who are not Christians. Because if we do that, then we're never going to reach them. I was going to say, how is anybody going to get saved? You know, all the yeah. Christians hang who, did God, who, who, did God, who did Jesus hang out with? Sinners. 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 But like we need to make sure that we know his word and we're connected to But Jesus word. never right. wavered when he was with the no, sinners. He, he was always oh, the same, same. Yes. whether he was and with the family. Pharisees or the sinners or, or whoever. We've got to be that way. Our problem is is that we go, we have a good intention, but we haven't quite got that heart connected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We conform to. I was going to say we conform yeah. to their ways because yeah. you don't want to be the outcast of everybody. We don't want to upset yeah. anybody or make right. anybody That's feel uncomfortable I mean, honestly, or hurt anybody's right. feelings. When you got 20 you know, people over here in a pile and you're sitting over here by yourself because okay. you're not doing what these 20 are over here are doing, then you feel you like. You do. I mean, so yeah. you still yeah. have to watch your playgrounds. You mm-hmm. still have to watch yeah. the places you go into. You know, you still have to watch. And, you know, I have an issue if. Y'all, I loved margaritas. That was my drink. I loved them. I could turn tequila up, <laughs> drink it straight. Didn't bother me. I loved it. Just so I don't go to Margaritaville and get me a margarita. You know, <laughs> I I don't I don't step into that because I know that that's a weakness for me. Yeah. But if we don't get the connection right, we can't see the weaknesses. Uh-huh. We can't see the dark and the light places mm-hmm. if the connection's not right. So we have to make sure that we keep that connection strong. Because, all right, if, you sh- if I had a flashlight right now and I shined it through my hands and I've got 
three different levels here, okay? I don't know if you can see that on there. If I've got it like this, what's going to happen if Valerie shines that flashlight through here? It's going to. It's going to sprinkle out because yep. I've got holes yep. through my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. But if I get that tunnel lined up to where I can see, mm -hmm. I can focus, yep. what's going to happen? That light is going to go through straight, straight, yeah. It's going to be a straight connection to the Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I've got to keep that lined up. I can't let it waver. I can't twist to the left or the right. I can't open up a little bit. Because then the light's going to come out. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. got that crack in there. Yeah. So we've got to make sure that that connection is strong, that it's firm, and that it's straight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. That's right. Mm -hmm. If the connection is not straight That's true. and not lined up with the Word of, word of God, then it's not going to matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make a difference because there is one way to heaven. That's and right. that's through Jesus through Christ. Jesus Christ. There is no other way. The, the path is straight and it's yeah. narrow. I don't care how you look at it. Jesus I don't care how loving you try to be. I don't care what you try to say. Don't turn your back on people because they're different. But if, they're, if you're not walking the straight and narrow path, you're not going to go to heaven. That's, that's right. right. You cannot get in there if you're being everything to everybody. That's right. Because that's too broad. It's yep. too wide. Yep. You, you're not focused. You're making decisions that don't include God. But if you narrow that path down and you come back to where God's intended you to be and you're on that straight and that narrow, you're not looking to the left or the right because you're too focused. You're straight. Uh -huh. You're not looking to the left and the right. You're being what God's intended you to be. And that's what we've got to do, politically correct or not. That's right. If it don't line up with the it's Word not, of God... It's not. It's not from God. That's right. Leave Amen. it alone. Stay out. Don't dabble in it. Don't trust in it. Don't think, well, but I'm supposed to be loving. Be loving. I didn't say don't be loving. Right. But you don't waver to it. You don't give in to it. It's not about hating the person. It's about hating, hating the, the sin. sin. Mm, that's right. You know, when you see somebody that's in that sin, pray for them. Love on them. You know, try to show them Jesus. Yeah. You don't conform to their way. Just because they're drinking or just because they're doing right. whatever, you don't switch over to that. And I'm struggling with that with, with smoking. Yeah. I'm still struggling with that. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> and and I know that God's going to snatch me up by the hair of the head if I don't get this figured out. You know? Yeah. And so I'm... I'm there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm One getting step there. At a time, baby. I'm One spiritually step healing. I've got to get this connection go. straight and get this connection line back up. And I've got to find that connection that God's saying, okay, chick, I'm ready to move you on to the next step. Are you coming? But them cigarettes can't come. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, because I was you know, busy. You ain't been around nobody that was smoking in Costa Rica neither. Right, and I was busy, 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 Because busy. I do real yeah. good, but like at Joe's family reunion, or that mm -hmm. funeral thing, mm -hmm. everybody was smoking. I mean, it was blowing right my face. I was like, oh, I want a cigarette so bad. I know. I, I want know. a cigarette so and it's, bad. It's, I just, I love but I didn't, the I didn't smell. smoke, though. I didn't smoke. All right, amen. I stayed strong. I didn't smoke. Amen. I was, it was and hard. you know, it's <laughs> so difficult when we... When we put ourselves in environments and we, when we put ourselves mm -hmm. in situations. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can have the strength. Like, I went to a restaurant last night that had alcohol. Mm -hmm. I could have ordered a margarita because I had a really sucky day yesterday. <laughs> I really wanted one. No, you didn't. But can't. I didn't it, want well, that, one. Yeah. I, mean, Valerie left. I know it wasn't sucky before that. <laughs> I was coming. She said, 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 I was coming. No, y'all just don't even know. She said, she but I, I had to consciously make that decision that's right. not to order that drink. That's right. That's like me with the cigarette. I you had know. Consciously do it. But my Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ but strength. Absolutely. So, yeah. therefore, I didn't have to smoke that cigarette. That's even right. though, in back of the mind, the devil will say, you and, you know, Wendy secret. said something a couple of weeks ago when, when we were first talking about this. And I said, look, I'm not trying to call out anybody's sin. And I'm not trying to say that if you're smoking, you're sinning. And I'm still not trying to do that because it's different for every person. That's right. right. Okay. Right. We're all in a different walk. You're at a different walk. You're at a different level. That's right. But what I am saying is that, just like Wendy said, drinking, we, we've always said that drinking is a sin, 
because of what happens when you drink. You right. get drunk, you take it too far, whatever. Right. Because I don't think really that drinking is a sin. It's about when you get drunk, when you overdo Over it. Because it. Right. Jesus turned water into, into wine, wine. Right. Right. for right. his mother. Right. I do believe that. I, I don't believe that it's a yes. sin until you take it to a different level. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and if you know that's a problem for you, you know that's that you've got to exactly. stay away from it. Absolutely. Now, if I could take one drink and I'm good with one drink and I don't act like a fool and all yeah. that, that's cool. Yeah. But that don't mean he don't say, yeah. well, drink, 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 drink. Do you right. act like an idiot, fall well, see, down drunk? And that's why I, I am say, well, yeah, that's with drinking. Yeah. That's I, can take, I can drink a, a margarita and be fine. Put it down, never go back to it again, drink it once a year. <laughs> right. I, I, drink, I drink sometimes on New Year's. I don't get drunk. Okay. But but doing drugs is a different story. Right. I know that's my weakness. Right. And I can't even look at it, be around anybody who's doing it, or even see somebody who's been, who I know who I associate with that. Or it brings back that urgency. And later me. on, it won't be like that for yeah. Right now, it's because it's yeah. new to you. Right. right. But I, I'm, or, or it hasn't for me. Yeah. I mean, for seven years, I haven't done meth. And when I see somebody on meth, I just start praying for them immediately, thinking, Lord, if they could just get a little bit of what I got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would change their way so yeah. much. Yeah. See, I was clean seven years, almost eight years before. And when I relapsed this time for the first time, this is the first time I've relapsed after being clean for so long. Right. And I did it for, for three years. It's like now, God, it's, a, it's different this time. It's like God mm -hmm. took it from me this mm -hmm. time. Yeah, I didn't right. lay it down last yeah, time. That's right. I laid it down last right. time. This was time delivered. God took, took it. it. He yeah. delivered, delivered me. Delivered. So delivered. I have joy and peace in me now. And he cannot do that unless you make that connection. Unless you want, want to let it go. Yeah. You have to make that connection so mm -hmm. strong and so tight with God that he says, you know what? You're ready. Yes. I got, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. So, how do y'all feel? How do y'all feel about um, it affecting your testimony if you... I absolutely believe it affects your testimony. Yes, I do too. Okay. I, I believe that me. if somebody if saw me... One, I believe if somebody saw me coming out of the liquor mm -hmm. store or if somebody walked up in a restaurant mm -hmm. and I had a margarita sitting in front of me, whether it's a virgin margarita or not, it's in the glass. It gives the annotation that it is exactly. a liquor straight. It, it would blow my testimony yeah. away yeah. because yeah. I have right. openly said I the had a problem right. with yes. alcohol. It's not that I still drink alcohol and that's why I have a problem. It's the problem that when I did drink, I Both didn't know time. how to stop yes. drinking. Yes. And so I had a problem. Anything yes. Therefore, I am still an sin. alcoholic yes. recovery. And, and I, I don't, I don't, I didn't have a problem drinking and never had, but I believe yeah. that it will affect my testimony yeah. if I drink mm -hmm. and someone sees me drinking mm -hmm. because yeah. I'm professing to be clean and sober, mm -hmm. and even though it's from drugs, I'm mm -hmm. professing to be clean and sober, and I don't think that, mm -hmm. that, I think that it would affect my testimony. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I kind of brought all that up to go back to the cigarettes, you know, when Wendy said that a couple of weeks ago when we were here, she said, but our body is our temple. That's right. Yes. And That's right. the tobacco we inhale, it goes into our lungs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it affects, it darkens, it hurts, it yeah. angers, yeah. whatever. Yes. Yes. And so at some point in time in our walk, Christ may take that That's right. from mm -hmm. us. Right. To move us to a new level. Yeah, that's right. Okay, if it wasn't a sin to begin with, it's now become a sin that's because right. God has asked you to give it right. up. That's right. He's that's asked right. you to make that that's sacrifice, right. and you have to make that decision to do that. Yeah, that's but right. it's going to happen at different times in all of our walks. Yes. And so that's why we have to be careful to not judge somebody so quickly until we've walked in their walk or understand their walk. That's and right. and to, to always remember... God, please let me see through your eyes. Let me, because yes. if so, if God has delivered somebody from an addiction of meth or marijuana or whatever, mm -hmm. and they smoke now, praise God. Right. You know, He's That's delivered right. them from That's something. Right. Yeah. And and it may be that they drink coffee all day long. Do you know coffee can be a sin? Yeah. Yes. Coffee longs our body. That goes back to what I said. Anything we that overdo, overdo, overdo is anything sin. that we put higher than Christ is right. a sin. That's right. That's right. So it doesn't matter what it is, right. tobaccos, you know, food, food, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 
You know, that makes a difference right. in our walk with Christ. And when he tells us to move it. To stop it, stop it. Yes. If we don't it move it, then it blocks. It, yeah, it's, it's twisted. Yep. Okay? Yep. The light can no longer get through. It's right there, and it's pushing and pushing. But until we make the decision to change whatever it is that Christ wants us to change mm -hmm. so that that can turn back and line back up, that light can't get through there. Amen. So that's what I, I want us to take away from that. Uh, Isaiah 53, 5. Okay. We're not going to get through today. <laughs> but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Iniquity, iniquity sorry. The chastisement There's for here, our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed alright you know everybody always wants to wants to pull out that you know by his stripes we're healed and they want to use it for everything in his brother right okay and I do believe that when God is saying this he is wanting us to understand that we are healed by his stripes yes but that healing may not be a physical healing. Right, right. right. It may just be a spiritual healing. Right. Mm -hmm. It may be the fact that we were allowed to get up today and breathe. Right. Amen. On our own. Yes. It may be that we have two feet we can stand on today. We have to understand that what God sees and what we see are two different things. Right. And it may just be that He's allowed a little bit of the pain uh, to so not sorry. be so bad. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and you can tolerate it. Yes, that give us the ability to, to, to tolerate. To tolerate it. Those yeah. of us who have he's done that for me. Yeah, those of us who have fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. arthritis, a lot of these autoimmune deficiencies, mm -hmm. women who struggle with their menstrual cycles and the cramps mm -hmm. and the pain mm -hmm. that is associated with that, people who struggle with you know not having mental clarity, or even people who wear glasses, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. at times there's really really deep struggles that you have with that. And, you know, you, I have prayed for my eyes for so many years, and finally I have just accepted that I've, I've finally gotten to the point to where maybe God's just, maybe God doesn't want to heal my eyes because it'll hinder my walk. Okay? Or maybe hinder somebody else's because you can yeah. associate right. with them. Exactly. Right. And, if you might not and so I have to start looking at my whole life that way. Right. Maybe your situation isn't changing just yet. Because it's not time That's right. for it to change. You know, Melinda, but if you can accept that it may not be time, exactly. then God will give you the strength to get through it. He'll give you the yes, power you that you on. need exactly. to get through it. He'll to... give you the relief that you exactly. need to get through that. I used to ask for healing for my fibromyalgia. And instead of getting healing, I am now able to work full time. That's right. More than full time. Right. See, you know, so God right. answers prayers like that. Yes, he does. Just the healing comes but in. But when you were praying way. for the healing, that's all you saw. That's exactly. all you wanted. Yeah. Exactly. And when the healing didn't come, then you get this feeling uh, of the feed and yeah. this, well, what am I not doing? Yeah. Why is God not healing me? Yeah. Because uh -huh. I have seen people healed of cancer. Uh -huh. I've seen people yeah. healed of major things in their life right. but then I've also seen other people like my un uncle Walt who lost his battle yeah you know he didn't lose his battle you he know won. he's more he one won. than he is <laughs> yeah. before but then when I started looking through it through God's eyes and real Jackie uh, 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 Aiden just went out when I started looking at it through God's eyes, He really won the battle. That's right. You know, I, for right. a long time, I, I was angry about it. And mm -hmm. I wanted to say, well, He lost. You know, I believed that He was going to walk back up in this church, that He was yeah. going to learn how to walk with His prosthetic, and that he, His his kidneys were going to be healed. I yeah. believed that, and I believed it with they every are. fiber. But and you know what? Are. It wasn't my decision. That's right. That's right. That's right. It wasn't my decision as to when or how. That's right. It was God's decision and what God knew to be. Yeah. And, and TJ, I hope you don't mind me saying this. Walter Satterfield would have died in his heart if he'd have still been here to see some of the things that has went on since his death. Of course yes. he would. Yes, of course. It would have broken his heart possibly mm -hmm. to the point that he might have walked away from God. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And God knew that. He well, knew God, what God was coming. You know, time. and so I want us to get in the mindset of seeing what God sees. I want us, when we're faced with a situation, I want us to just take a minute, close our eyes, and just say, God, let me see what you see. Let That's me good. see what it is yes, that really I good. cannot see. Yeah. You know, God protects. He and 
you know, like, like, like in a small child passes. Right. Like, you know, we don't, God sees the road on down, uh -huh. you know, and, and, you know, he's protecting that, that mm -hmm. child from whatever may take right. place. That we can't road. see. Exactly, that we right. can't see. So, yeah, you're exactly right. You can yeah. watch why Walter's healed. Oh, yeah. He's healed oh, and he's yeah. happy. Absolutely. And his heart, you know, didn't yeah. get any more broke, more mm -hmm. broken than what it already had been in the past. And, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and that's, and he's healed. Yeah. He's yeah. healed. And we, but we have to see it through God's eyes to see it that way. That's right. Valerie, is your next one 61? 58. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. I want you to take out two things from that. The glory of the Lord is the flashlight. Okay? Your connection, it can't shine through. There again, if your connection is not perfect, if your circle is not right... That light can't break through there. It cannot break through to reach you if you close it off. That's like a cloud. Right. When the clouds are out, the sun can't shine through the clouds. That's right. That's right. right. Until the clouds move. That's and right. we need, that's a really good relationship that I wanted to bring out with, with that is the sun can be shining as bright as it can. The S-O-N and the S-U-N mm -hmm. can be right. shining to the fullest. That's right. right. But if the cloud or the Christian... Or the problem. Or the problem overcomes. Yes. Shining brighter than, yes, exactly. If, if we let it become the focus and be the brightest and come to the forefront, yeah. what's going to happen mm -hmm. to the sun or the S O N or the S U N? He's gonna be They're going to get pushed push back. Yeah. Put on back. Because a cloud can cover the brightest sun. It sure can. Yes. And we have got to remember that, that mm -hmm. Jesus is still there. That's He's right. still shining as brightly That's as He right. was. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who make the decision right. to let our focus be on our problem, right. on our That's issue, right. and, the devil is happy and when not our focus on, is on the, problem. the sun. Uh -huh. Because when we're on the problem, then we're not doing what we need to be That's doing right. for the Lord. And that's where right. he attacks us most. That's, that's where he attacks yes. us right. the most. When he sees what we bring, what becomes our idol, what becomes our most important aspect, that's what he's going to attack. Because when I first found out that I was sick or whatever, I focused more on my sick. Yeah. I did, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. now I'm at peace with it, and I've been on the swing. The other day I was watching a preacher, John Hagee or whatever, and he said, whoever's watching this right now, you're being healed, your liver's being healed. And I felt like I was, like he just come over me and I said, you know what, I'm not even, I mean, I hadn't been worried about it before that, you know what I mean? But right. I, but I yeah. felt like, God I haven't been, speaking to you not to worry. Mm -hmm. Yes, not to worry about it. He's got it. And I, I, feel, I, feel, I, and I feel And, that. and look how many people you were able to witness to. Yep. When you were going to the doctor's office, the doctor and you were going through all yeah. that. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. sometimes I feel like God allows us to go through things mm -hmm. to he be does. able to help other people oh, yeah. with it. Oh, yeah. it must definitely. Like, we'll, definitely. We'll be in that dark place of like, okay, why am I going through this? Yeah. Yeah. But there again, hey, it's our decision. Hold this. It's our decision as to what, lock the doors, Jackie. It's our decision whether we choose the light or the dark spot, That's exactly right? right. That's right. That's exactly right. It's always our decision. That's right. God is a God gentleman. He's not going to push no, us no, one no. way or the other. It's mm -hmm. our decision whether we stay on the right or the left. That's right. Or we walk the middle of the road. That's right. You okay. picked the next one for me on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> yes. All right. Read Isaiah 61.1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord the Lord has anointed me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Amen. Amen. All right. There's Amen. several things in that one. One, can a rich man reach a poor man? No, 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 it's going to be very, very, very difficult hard. if you yeah. can, right? I mean, he's mm -hmm. going to have to really have a right connection mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. But if we are still struggling financially, if we don't have the best of the best, if we're not driving the Mercedes and we're not living in the the biggest house on the block, well, that's me. <laughs> do we have an opportunity to witness to both the rich? Yes. And the unrich. Yes. Yes. yes, we do. Because the un the 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 rich is going to look at us. Wow, they can still be happy and even struggle. Exactly. Yes. Those who are less fortunate than us are like, 
Wow. They're, just they're, like we they're are. still but, staying yeah, happy. They're not, they're in the same mm-hmm. boat I'm at. They're living from paycheck to I paycheck. I what they got. And sometimes that's what my neighbor told me. The richest people oh, are really? the saddest people. Not, not Donna, but that's came right. the next door. Does, does it about. mean that God will always keep us in that spot? No. no. Not no, always. It doesn't. Not always. Because at some point in time, we he may rise people. us above that, okay? Lift us up. Help our finances to be better. He right. may give us a bigger or better car. He may give us a bigger right. or better house. But it's our decision as to whether or not that's going to stay. Right? Mm-hmm. Because if we don't make the conscious choice to keep praising God for that and to remember every day that we have it by the grace of God, He can snatch that back away from us just as quickly as that's anything. Right. So He puts us in a place. He, you go. He puts us in a place to where... We make that decision as to how far we're going to go by our praise Mm -hmm. or our not lack of praise. Because even a house that costs a hundred thousand dollars, or you're living in a house that costs thirty thousand dollars, you can make the best out of it. You can keep that house clean. You can keep your yards up. You can keep your clothing washed. Or you can choose to not. That's right. It's your choice. Right. But if we start showing happiness and peace in what God has given us already, He may just increase us. That's right. But if He sees that that increase is going to cause us to get out of church or start having, right. what what did you rather Him do? Give you that increase and take the chance, or just not give it to you? Just don't give it to me. And him. keep that relationship mm-hmm. strong. That's right. Yeah. That's when we need to ask God, let me see through your eyes, God. Yep. Let me see what you see. Because if we see that, then maybe we can change that. Yeah. Maybe we can change that attitude of ungratefulness that we have yep. to where he would be able to increase us. But we can't do that if we're not seeing it through God's eyes, if we're just trying to see it through our own eyes. And yeah. we can't see it through God's eyes if we don't have the connection there. So it's all going to come back to that connection. Amen. All right, TJ, read John three sixteen and 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. And we've all heard that. We've heard it in probably every version of scripture that there is. But there's one thing that remains the same. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Amen. He did it willingly, and he accepted God's will. Did he ask for it to change? Yes, he did. Absolutely, yes. he did. Yes. He said, but it was and was he wrong for that? No. no. God doesn't care that we ask for change. He cares that we accept his will. Yeah, exactly. That's the decision that we have to make. Do we continue to pray for God to change, change, change something, and never say whatever your will is, God? And be at peace with that? Or do we continue to beg and plead and pray for God to change something and have it change it and change our walk with him in a No, I want his in will a be done, not way. mine, because I don't yeah, see his head like he does. That's he knows, right. He knows and, you know, that's that's the one thing that I, I, I want to pull out of that. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and we cannot go to heaven without him. Unless he's in our life, unless we've asked him to forgive us right. and we've accepted that he is Christ and that he has washed us white. We cannot. But so many people think that when you get washed white, it's a one-time thing. You stay pure forever. You don't ever make any mistakes again. Oh my Your life is hunky-dory. Well, you don't have any life. more problems. That does happen when we get to heaven. <laughs> but it does not happen on that walk here. We still are going to have struggles. We're still going to have to make decisions. And we are still going to make mistakes. That's right. We're still going to We are still going to fall and have sin in our life. Of course we are. The difference is how we handle that. When you're living in a life of sin, then you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you to tell you that you're doing wrong. That's right. That's right. Okay? So you just continue on. But when you get it with God, when you really, really, really give your life to Christ and you make that connection, you know when you've done something wrong. That's right. I don't think there's a one of us sitting at this table that could say, no, God ain't never told me I did nothing wrong after I got saved. Mm -mm. 
Because if you did, you just done a big one. It was a lie. A what? It just, was a big lie. You just, you just yeah, did a big one and lied. Uh, we, what she done so yeah. we have to we have to understand that being a Christian doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean we don't have sin in our life. Still, no. we still gossip. Hello, that's sin. Yeah. A lot of people think that once you give your life to Christ, everything's hunky dory. From that's there right. Yeah. Everything's great and grand, and you don't have no struggles. And, and I am so so thankful that we have a pastor who does not preach that, who does not live Me that, too. who does not pretend that that's the truth. I'm so thankful that we have a pastor who lets us know. Yes. Look, I still struggle. Yes. He's transparent to us. You know, you know I still have to deal on. with pride. I still have yes. to deal with issues just like you. We've got to make that decision in our own life mm-hmm. to understand that God knows what's best for us. Right. He died on the cross for us. Amen. He's covered our sins. No one, he died. This is the thing. He died on that cross knowing that I was unworthy. Yeah. He died before I was ever a thought. That's right. But he still had me on his mind. Amen. You know, he still had me in his heart. He still knew that I was going to be at some point in time. Yeah. And he knew that I was going to take pills. He knew that I was going to drink too much. That's right. He knew that I was going to have sex before marriage. Mm-hmm. He knew all those things, but he still loved me. Yeah, like I got he knew that I was going to be in unhealthy relationships. But he still loved me. He still, he still loved me enough to continue on that cross. Says, yes. As we were still sinners, he still yes. loved us. Yes. Like, like and if I we can. Share the other night, um, no matter, like God knew that we were all going to mess up even after we got saved. Mm-hmm. But yet he still chose yeah even though he knew we were going to mess up still right and like, still do I, right. it, 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 yes. don't, it don't matter so just I'm doing this you know god me. chooses just like we choose mm-hmm. god had choices he had to make you know when yeah. he was out in the desert he could have chosen That's right. to listen to the temptations of satan mm-hmm. he was a man mm-hmm. he lived in a human body he mm-hmm. had flesh and bones and blood right. just like we do so he could have made the decision to follow Satan if he wanted to. God, God was, it's not like he lived on this earth and was never tempted. He understands the That's temptations. Right. Exactly. But he went through the temptations to understand us that, that we could get through those temptations. Yeah. Okay? That we could gain us strength a way out. from him. He gives him. us a way out if we just listen to him and yeah. pay attention to him. Yeah. He, we, us he gave us the strength, the ability to choose differently and to show us that it's possible to choose differently. Right. But we have to make the choice. Okay. It's still our decision. Okay? God is a gentleman and he's never yes, going to force is. anything on us. So we have to make that conscious decision um, to get through that. Read um, 4, 7 through 15, TJ. This is John 4, 7 through 15. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. Jesus said to she said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But, sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give nev- will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. All right. What I think when I think about this, this is what I draw from it. It's the same thing when we're shining the light. If he doesn't have the rope that goes down, Mm -hmm. then he doesn't get the water. Okay? Mm -hmm. If we're not standing under the drops, we don't get the light. We don't get the Mm -hmm. water. So it doesn't matter how you look at it. Jesus and and God has so many words in the Bible. (laughs) 
<laughs> in the Bible that tells us the same thing over right. and over and over again. It's about the connection. Right. If you don't make the connection there, then nothing else matters. That's right. If you have a rope and you have a bucket, but you don't connect to the water, what difference does it make? That's right. Okay? That's right. It's the same thing. If you have the word, you yeah. have the preaching, you have the look, yeah. but you never connect to the Father, you're just as lost as, as the next right. brother sitting last beside you. Easter eggs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're just like last year's Easter egg. You're still out there in the parking lot somewhere. But that's what we don't think sometimes about. We, we see this and we think the story is all about the woman. Yeah. <laughs> we, we think it's all about, he's putting his face up in the camera. We think that it's all about the woman who was sitting there, who was in sin, and she was, you know, Jesus is telling her, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the story. That is part of it. But what he's wanting us to understand is the way, the truth, and the life don't matter if your rope don't reach the water. Oh, that's good. Okay? Yeah. If your bucket never hits the well and hits the water, yeah. you can't draw it back that's up good. and drink from it. So if we don't ever hit our knees, if we don't ever hit that bottom to where we can look up to Christ, that water's never going to fall to us. Right. So we all have our bottom that we have to hit. Even, even the best of people. And I, I hope... If Joyce or Joe hears this, I hope they don't mind me saying this, but I love me some Joe Cook. Yes, yes, me too. That's sweetheart. You know, when I was younger, growing up, you know, I always remembered him as being a kind, gentle soul. That's right, yes, yeah, always. You know, but was Joe, did Joe have to get saved just like me? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. His mom, his dad, his goodness did not was not going to get him into heaven. That's right. He had to give his life to Christ Amen. the same exact way I did. He had to hit his knees, hit right. his bottom, find his spot to where God said, Joe, you're going to hell if you don't give your life to me. Right. That's right. And he made the decision to do that. Right. He was no better than me. He was no worse than me. That's right. He had to go the same way I had to go, and that was through Jesus Christ. Right. So I want us to understand that in this passage, God is saying, it doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter who your family is, doesn't matter how much you have or don't have. Jacob and his family may have built that well. They may have dug that well. They may have caused the water to run in that well. Right. But if you don't have a bucket that touches that water, you're SOL. That's right. You don't have anything. Yeah. And that's what God wants us to understand is no matter how high or how low, you still got to come through me to get that's to heaven. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I, I want us to take away from that. I still had a few other, and I do want to give you all a few more verses to read this next week. Uh, you want me to read 11? Oh. 11, 25, and 26. Yeah, go ahead and read that one. I forgot about that one, TJ. Sorry. So, uh, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives, who, who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe in this, Martha? Ooh. That's strong, yeah. ain't it? It's strong. You know, we think, we were talking about Uncle Walter a while ago, you know, and, I, and at first I saw his death, and that's all I could see. Right. It wasn't until God opened my eyes and let, and that I let God show me through Jesus' eyes that Walter was very much alive and, and very much in heaven and being loved and, and looking down on me. That's happened with all of us with different people that we've lost in our right. life. And... You know, I thought about that, and I thought, okay, was was Walter disappointed that I was so angry at God, you know, because I I felt like I had been gypped, mm -hmm. okay? Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. I felt like I had been gypped. I felt like something that I trusted in had been taken, okay? We are all going to go through that. It may be death. It may be a financial loss we have. It may be um, an illness that attacks us. It could be anything that steals our joy. But I made the conscious decision to ask God to let me see through his eyes. Let me see what it was that I was missing. And when I did, he revealed to me, you're missing the big story. This is how it's supposed to be. This is how it was intended to be. I know what you don't know. 
He's happy. He's fine. He's healthy. He's alive. You know, we always think of death as being final. But it's not. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I've said that so many times in the last two weeks. Oh, I know you have, Wendy. Oh, I know. Uh, but that's what the Bible says. And, and i got to believe that. But we don't, we don't think about that, do we, on just a regular day. We, don't, we forget that part. Yeah. And we forget that being absent from this world and all that's in it, just means that we're with Jesus if we get our heart right, if we get our That's connection right. Right. right, if we're drawing the water up from the well instead of letting it sit there. That's where we come into the difference. All right, let me give you a few more verses for y'all to, uh, to read this week. Jeremiah seventeen fourteen, Luke four eighteen, Second 2 Corinthians... 517 1 Thessalonians 523 and 1 Peter 2:24 and y'all want me to, let's go ahead and do I'm gonna go ahead and give you the financial ones that um, we're gonna go over next week um, these are dealing with financial issues and how we can overcome those spiritually not not humanly, because we forget that. The battle's won spiritually. You hear me? The battle is won spiritually, not physically. We think the battle's won physically. We think when we've got $100,000 in the bank account that we've won. No, we haven't. You know. That might send us to hell. That very well, absolutely. All right, so Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 Malachi 3, 10 and 11. Malachi 3, Malachi 3 10 and 11. Luke 6, 38. Philippians 4, 19. That's one of my favorite. That is my favorite. <laughs> Third John. I want you to read the whole chapter 2 there. Okay. Third John, the whole chapter two, mm-hmm. okay. and we're we're going to talk about those next week. And I want y'all to to pray about these and ask God to give you insight as to how you can apply it to your to your own life and to your you know what's going on right now in your life. Because I don't know about y'all, but I can read the Bible and I can read a verse today. And I can read it next week, and God may give yeah, me something. Oh, yeah, 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 so different. Yeah. And it's the same words. Yeah, definitely. But He applies it to what's relevant to us right now. Right. But if we're not reading it, we're not being fed it, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get connection. We're not going to keep it strong. So um, thank all of you guys for watching. Hey, Chase. Hey, Matt. Um, hey, Vicki. Love you. Sorry for my kids. Um, so uh, we will be back next week. Um, we appreciate y'all watching with us, and I hope you gained something from it today. But we love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.